Hi, Mark. It's nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yesterday, we had a little email conversation. I sent you the questions and you replied also, of course. Thank you so much. And uh, I watched the whole film yesterday and today uh, to prepare also for the interview. I um, had some notes and then I was going or I entered uh, the film with your score, for example, also many things uh, I liked a lot. Um, especially <laughs> the end titles I love a lot, yeah? There's uh, the first um, track um, is with this violence. It's really, I like it a lot. And also some other stuff of, of the, uh, of the um, end titles. But um, this end title is like, for me, um, not just a mixture, it's like a, a, a little symphonic. Uh, uh, it's symphony. a sweet, essentially. Yeah, it's sweet, yes. sweet, sweet, yeah? it's a so this was also uh, your, your thinking, maybe, right? Yeah, to do it like Well, that. yes. I mean, there wasn't enough time to create an original piece for the, for the credits. So it's actually an amalgam of various cues that I put together uh, for the credits. Um, so I created a suite from the score. Yeah. Uh, and it turned out, I guess it turned out pretty well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Also, I, was, I should uh, send greetings to you from your friends from Norway. I did before the interview with Christian and Jörn. And oh. I'm so happy with your soundtrack. As a really, in the, uh, I did also a video interview with them for my YouTube channel, The Spirit, and also for my magazine, uh, Spirit, The Smile and the Storm. And uh, the first 10 minutes, we just talked about your soundtrack. <laughs> really? Well, I'm, I'm very touched. And it was such a pleasure to work with them. Uh, very easy people to, to, to work with and, and so much fun to discover, um, you know, to make new friends abroad. Yeah, uh, I think so. You have good friends now in Europe. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And now you sit in Montreal or where are you? Yes, I'm in Montreal. Uh, that's my home base and that's where I, I live and that's where I live and score, essentially. <laughs> I, I could see also in the end titles that you recorded in Montreal in this Piccolo yes. studio. Is Everything it... was done here with musicians from Montreal, uh, studios in Montreal. Everything was created uh, here. And I make it a point to actually do that as much as I can to encourage, of course, uh, local uh, local musicians. And we have such wonderful players, of course, because we have the Montreal Symphony Orchestra, which is a wonderful orchestra, uh, the um, Metropolitan Orchestra conducted by uh, uh, Yannick Nézé-Séguin, who's uh, world famous now. And so yeah. we have a, a, a pool of musicians that are absolutely fantastic in the city. So I want to take advantage of that. And uh, is Yannick Armenian? Is Armenian? Yannick? Uh, no, no, he's Quebecois. He's a, he's a Canadian. <clears throat> yeah, but maybe with Armenian descent, and the name sounds so because one of my closest friends is Armenian director, and you know him is Atom Egoyan, as it lives also in. Oh, Atom Egoyan, yeah. Okay. And, uh, a... <laughs> you know each other since 15 years, and we were together in the jury of International Film Festival uh, Yerevan, Golden Apricot together, and so on. So mm. He's a fantastic guy. So um, I'm half Armenian, half German, yeah. Uh, so ah, I see, myself. I see. My dad is yeah. Armenian. Um, mm. Yeah. And um, but this Piccolo studio is not your own studio. It's uh, you. Uh, no, I mean I, I no. It's, I have my composing studio, yeah. which uh, is where I'm sitting in right now. Yeah, yeah. And but I do, uh, you know, I, I I hire. I go to a studio in Montreal to to record, like like going to a soundstage and 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 recording essentially. Uh, so no, it's not mine per se, and that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> and now I like to hear from you. Uh, I asked also before the question in a different way uh, to the Norwegian filmmakers. Uh, how did you um, come together uh, for mm -hmm. a troll, a tale, in, uh, tale from the tale? Um, because you are from Canada, uh, they come from Norway. We do not well. Yeah, it's an interesting question because uh, well. First of all, this is a co-production. So it was a co-production between Canada, Norway, and China. Uh, so there was a financing from, from different sources, uh, but the original concept is from Christian and Jorn uh, at Sagatune. <clears throat> and so I met them through the Montreal producer. Um, and I had known the producer for, for a long time. And I was actually aware of this film. <clears throat> excuse me. No I was aware of this film. 
uh, before it was even started and uh, uh, through, uh, through Jean Aubert, who was the producer at the time. And then I eventually met with Christian and we did the, um, uh, there was a, uh, a trailer that was created to try and sell the film. So there were many years essentially that went by before the actual production uh, of the film. And that's, that's how I got to, to meet them, essentially circumstances. Uh, I knew the producer, I'm Canadian, and the music was being done here, and uh, that's how we met. I know from Christian and Ion, that's a long time project from 2005. So uh, how long did you need for the, for the score, uh, for doing it? Uh, no, I wasn't involved in the score until, uh, until later in, I think, 2016 or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, I was, you know, I was, I wasn't involved way back when in 2005, and it's been a long haul for them. I know it was very difficult to finance and 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 make it through, but they were very tenacious and brave, and and uh, they were like Vikings, right? <laughs> very brave and bold, and they they took their they took their film and they brought it to uh, to fruit, and uh, I'm glad they did because it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, yeah, and is it uh, you have more freedom? When you compose as a as a soundtrack composer uh, the score for an animation film, uh, like when you come, okay, you have also some scenes here. I could see the whole version in the beginning and in the end. There's this frame story, yeah, with the real human actors, of course, yeah. But it's yeah. Uh, they, they told me not for the Norwegian market. It's uh, William showed it to me, sent me the stream. Maybe for Germany, it's also there, but uh, also for China, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as I know. Uh, but 95 percent of the film is animation so my question to you uh yeah i don't think it's uh it's not the fact that it's animation or live action that makes the score more complicated or simpler it's more the style uh of the film and because it's an action adventure film um it's generally more music heavy um, and because of the approach of the score was, was orchestral, uh, of course, added a layer of complexity to, to the creation of the score. So, uh, no, I don't, think, I don't think because it was animation, it was, you know, more this or less that. Uh, for me, it's all about storytelling, um, whether it's in live action. But of course, live action is a, if it had been done in live action, I think it would probably, probably have been pretty much the same film because because it's action, it's adventure, it's, uh, it requires music to illustrate what's going on. Um, so, yeah. Hmm. How long did you work on it? You do every day, like, I don't know, eight hours, and then uh, next day again, what is your style of composing hmm. when you- Well, it, it was an interesting experience with Troll. It was a particular experience because um, I was involved uh, even before they were animating because they, there are some scenes in the film that required music before because they wanted to animate to music. There's, a, you probably remember, there's two parties. There's a party mm -hmm. in the beginning and there's a party in the end. And they're, the, 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 uh, the characters are very good with rhythm. So it's all about dancing and playing percussion. Mm -hmm. So the directors wanted me to create um, a musical sequence for the animators to animate to. Um, so this was done like a year before I even oh. started the score. It was, this was done way, way before. So I went in the studio, recorded with percussionists, and then came back with all the material. I recorded some material with a whole bunch of little things, uh, pots and pans and, and rubber bands and, and little things like that, that I put in, in, in the MIDI and the computer. And then I created a, I created a, a a, a sequence, a musical sequence for those parties. And this was done before animation. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, as far as score, once I get the, the locked picture for the film, uh, meaning that the film is finished, but we need to dress it up with music and sound effects and, and all that. Um, it was about a three and a half month period of creation for, for the music, which is, I guess, kind of a luxury that it was, it was a good amount of time. Um, and, uh, but I did work pretty hard. I worked uh, every day pretty much on it for, for, for a while there. It was, it was very intense and very disciplined work. I'm very disciplined, very organized and very structured in, in my work because you have no choice to be able to deliver 
especially since we were recording with a live orchestra, mm. um, uh, which complicates the matter even more because you have to plan recording sessions and uh, you have to create charts and and when you're actually creating the mock-ups uh, and, and the score itself, it has to be done a certain way so that you don't have any trouble later on. Anyway, to long story short, it's about a three and a half month period between starting the writing of the score and the actual delivery of the score for this particular film. And when you compose, it's like in this modern times, uh, you use always a computer or you write also some notes via hand? Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't write by hand anymore because it's, it's a, it's, it's a step that only for writing themes, actually, if I, first of all, I, I would sit at the piano mm -hmm. and I would figure out the various themes I would like to, I will need for the film. So I sit at the piano and then I write, I write it down and, it, and all that. But when I start creating the film, I, instead of writing, you know, a clarinet part, a flute part, a, you know, first violin part like that, I do it directly on the keyboard mm -hmm. because it needs to be done. And because producers and directors today uh, and since a long time want to hear their score before they go in the studio with the orchestra, you know, yeah, they want to be sure. And it's a good thing because it, it's, it makes everybody so much more secure. It makes me more secure when I reach the <laughs> studio sessions, then there's no more questions. Everybody's happy and we know what's going to happen and it's just going to be better with the live orchestra but no i don't um, i don't write the score by hand anymore except at the end when i'm done of course i i hire i work yeah. with my team of of uh um of uh charts you know for, to create the charts for the orchestra and then it's being written, of course. <laughs> but this rough version you do on the computer the, uh, and uh, offer to the producers, yeah, this really sound also good because when. Well, you yeah, the, uh, yes, yeah, I understand your question. It's uh, yeah, the the there are so many uh, wonderful orchestral uh, instruments now that you can have access to. There, there's there's tons of extraordinary libraries, and in fact, there are a lot of scores out there uh, that are not scored live and that are but that are classical scores but they're done uh by midi with um sampled libraries yeah. and uh in this case we were lucky we had a sufficient enough budget to uh to be able to go live and and, and hire some players uh, but yes to answer your question the um, the libraries that we have today in the computers uh allow for me to create a beautiful illusion of an orchestra for, for the producers. <laughs> and, and when you composed uh, the straw score, uh, you had some influences, as a, in some scenes, uh, you know, it's super famous, uh, Edward Grieg, yeah. Uh, some small parts remind me on it, but maybe it's also my imagination come closer to this, but how about you? And what were your influences? Oh, not, not at all. It's, it's not your imagination. It was an actual uh, uh, request from, from Christian from, from uh, when we were working together. Actually, when we did the trailer about two years before the score, um, they asked that I use the Peer Gint um, um, theme. And once I got to doing the score, Christian said, you know, if you can put it in there, it would really be great because we would like to have as much of a Scandinavian uh, influence in the score if we can. So I was saying, okay, I'll try, I'll see what I can do. And then when I saw the evil character of Grimmer, I said, okay, that's, that's it, that, that's perfect. That's gonna really be a good fit, I think. And I tried it and it worked. And so I wove it into the score uh, or a, a part of the melody of Pirgint. And uh, well, hopefully it works well. And apparently it has a really good result because you, you weren't too sure, but at the same time you, you recognized it. So that's exactly what I was aiming for. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and did you use also some Norwegian instruments like this uh, Norwegian horn, yeah? Uh, yes, we, we right. used many, many different uh, Norwegian instruments. We were very, uh, well, Christian was very adamant at, at the um, fact of, of getting, of using some instruments that would uh, connect with the culture 
Yeah. Uh, so I was very fortunate to have um, a wonderful nickel harpa player mm -hmm. here in Montreal, which is a, a very ancient piston violin that we use in the score. Uh, we ordered some um, some uh, uh, flout, or I, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but some harmonic flutes yeah. that are typical yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to Norway. And we had Cicel, Cicel Morgan Gullard who played uh, the bukehorn. Mm -hmm. Bukehorn, um, yes, this is what she, I mean. She was wonderful. And we recorded her uh, uh, at a distance. She was in Norway and, ah. and um, she, was, she was great. And it, I think it really added a, a really nice flavor. And we also had um, a choir from Norway, a woman's choir. And so all of this, I think, put together, this was the intention actually from the directors. Uh, in the beginning, they said, well, we want, we want a classic orchestral score. Um, and it was my intent after that to do a score that's very organic, no electronics, uh, nothing electronic, very, very pure and um, uh, organic. And uh, of course, adding the Scandinavian seasoning on top was also very, very important. So, uh, oh, that was so much fun doing that. It was really great. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And all was recorded then in this Montreal studio, as you told in the beginning, a Piccolo studio, or you used two studios, I don't know. No, we recorded uh, pretty much everything at Piccolo Studios, but uh, of course the Bukhorn and the choir was recorded, they were recorded in Norway. Uh, so we recorded at a distance. Um, so I was also thinking because this Bukhorn, maybe nobody use in, in Canada or there are still some instruments in Canada. I, I don't know, but... Uh... No, I, I didn't know anyone here and she was recommended um, to me, I think, by Christian and uh, she was lovely to work with. But no, I don't think there's... It's very particular, I think, to uh, Scandinavia. And do you play also some instruments in, uh, in the score uh, when you were recording it or not? I, I don't know. Uh, did I play anything? Well, there was no, I mean, except for the MIDI instruments that, that aren't recorded live, there's some celesta and piano and um, some percussions I played. I mean, I, I'm a guitarist. So oh. yeah, I did, I did play the guitar. I played the, some guitar and there's a ukulele song a little bit in the middle there. So uh, I, yes, I, I was a little bit involved in the playing. And when you uh, say you were uh, a guitarist, You had your own band before. You come also from uh, pop music, or uh, what? I do come from pop music, but I don't. I, I don't have a band. I have. I haven't had a band since my early 20s, So it's not really. You know, it was just cover doing covers and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. No, when I started working, I was really a, more of a studio rat. You know, a studio <laughs> person. <laughs> That's where I'm comfortable is behind the scenes. I'm not as comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, in front of the audience. <laughs> but you also conduct. Uh, I do, I do. Yeah, so I conducted. Maybe you have a live show, then you must uh, have contact with the audience. Uh, well, yeah, I guess you're right. But I mostly conduct in the studio. I don't really conduct live, uh, mm -hmm. you know, live uh, live orchestras. That's not really my my track uh, because I only only do film music, really. So, uh, but I enjoy doing it. I just I love being with with the players, with the musicians, and it's such a privilege when you reach that point and you're. And you've got all these wonderful players and you have the opportunity to conduct them. That's just that's just a, a real gift. When, when, because when I sent you uh, the picture yesterday of Maurice Jarre and me, he was re really, uh, I can say, close friend. I was honored to be his friend. Also with his son, Jean-Michel, is also a good friend of mine. Wow. And uh, Maurice always uh, as a conducted yeah uh, and then when he played passage to india with the orchestra in, in berlin babelsberg orchestra but it was in berlin in the concert hall gendarme marked and i had uh, really tears of joy in my eyes i told him and it was really uh, also touched so he was uh, also any morricone i was invited to his house uh, with my girlfriend five years ago last year he passed away i'm still uh, super sad <laughs> and oh, no. um, he all, also often as a conducted his own work yeah and especially when he were touring and so this uh, that these are genius so do you have also some idols in in, in film music and uh, well yeah i do they're, they're, maybe they're they're not it's not particularly original to say that but john williams is definitely oh. up at the top of my list because i grew up listening to his scores with 
it's my generation, you know, all the films from Spielberg and Lucas and, and um, you know, whether it's uh, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, E.T., all those movies uh, are part of, of my growing up. So they're very, very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I do admire, of course, um, uh, when I was a kid listening to Bugs Bunny and Tom and Jerry, you know, Carl Stalling, uh, Scott Bradley, um, these composers, I think were really at the source of my inspiration to be to yeah. become a composer. I think I didn't know, of course, when I was a kid, but I just absorbed mm -hmm. uh, this wonderful talent of music that they had. And uh, I think that inspired me to, to, to do this, to, to go into this field. And of course, my parents were musicians. Oh. You know, my mother was a piano player. My, my father was a composer for commercials. And I started my career in, in the jingle business. Mm. Um, and then eventually I kind of got tired of that and said, okay. And then I got my first film, uh, film gig and that kind of set me off into a, into a world of, that was really close to me. That's the storytelling part is so important to me uh, and the collaboration with other people creating a movie and being a part of that for me is, uh, is fantastic. So uh, in Germany, we say Traumberuf. Is it your dream prof profession to be a, a soundtrack composer? Or you can imagine also in this music uh, open field, you, you like to do other things or you will always be now uh, a soundtrack composer? Oh yeah, I'm definitely always going to be a sound composer, a, a soundtrack composer for sure. That's 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 where I belong. That's just, and I've been doing it for a pretty long time. So uh, I don't think it's time for me to change anymore. <laughs> it's a little late in my life now to change. And and I when I was a, a teenager, I was also uh, I was also doing some acting. So I could have gone on the oh. acting side. Yeah. But no, music was too was too strong, and there was never a plan B for oh, me. When you were acting, uh, what did you do uh, as a, teen a teenager, a children actor? What did you do? I don't yeah, know. I was a child actor. Well, mostly commercials and some t television series, local stuff here in Quebec and Canada. So it's nothing that you would know, but it was a wonderful experience to to be able to do that. And I think it probably, I, I mean, it's con all everything is connected, right? It's. Uh, you know, all the, the, the acting that I did, the commercials that I did as a child and and the music I listened to. I mean, I used to love to listen to progressive rock, you know, uh, Genesis and Yes and all that stuff. Yes, I love a good interview with them. Great. Really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. a few years ago. Fantastic. Oh, and I, and I'm, I, so I don't know, I think maybe we are the same age, uh, but uh, I come a little later to Yes. Because I had a good friend and he lost progressive rock and then he offered me always a yes and then I, I remember uh, my favorite was in that time don't kill the whale this is uh, what I loved a lot right. and then later when they had this hit record um, um, and owner of a lonely heart and so then oh, yeah. I had the, the record and then years later uh, I listened again and then the interview came to me yeah that's what offered to me from the concert agency i say immediately yes and this was so super to do interview with them i was really honored wow. i love them also really that's wonderful. fantastic you've you've had some amazing contacts with some amazing artists i mean maurice jarre yeah. for me lawrence of arabia is yeah. probably one of if not the greatest score of all time it's just it's mind-blowing and it, it just came out on netflix here in canada yeah. Uh, two years ago, and I watched it, and I, I just my I, my jaw just dropped. I thought, how could he do a score like this today? I don't know if that could be done. It's just absolutely. And he told me also it was really difficult. He always slept uh, uh, just three hours every day and set the alarm, and then uh, we are hand uh, writing again. And normally, um, Sam Spiegel, the producer. He wanted to have Aaron Kachaturian, the great Armenian composer for yeah. Oriental music, Benjamin Britten for mm -hmm. the British part and uh, Maurice for the rest. But then uh, Aram could not uh, uh, go out of uh, uh, USSR. Yeah, that was not allowed. And then he had to do the Oriental stuff. And then also with Benjamin Britten was composing an opera or something. Yeah, And then uh, Maurice must uh, had to do all. Yeah, But this wow. was his, his chance. Yeah, Even he was before famous on theater in France. Yeah, It was uh, also a theater music uh, composing. But of course, it's also for me. Uh, Peter O'Toole, uh, the whole film, everything. This is a oh, film. yeah. 
there's really the perfect film. Also, and I watched it, I'm crazy. I watched it 88 times and most of them in cinema and you do not know. I do also in Berlin, the most beautiful cinemas, Astor Film Lounge, Zupalas. I do uh, 35 and 70 millimeter original screenings oh, wow. uh, of the copies and uh, talk to the audience also with guests and so. Uh, Peter O'Toole, when I showed Lord Jim, was writing me a, a letter and I read it to the audience. Yeah. So, and uh, this is wow. uh, also the Horns of Arabia is also for me yeah, so, so outstanding. Also, the music of Maurice. Yeah. It, it's just it, that that would definitely be up there with, uh, you know, the greatest music of all time for film. That's for sure. It's, it's... So, this is also, you know, my questions when you read. Before, yes, yes, I know. Read. So then you named it now Lawrence of Arabia, but please name two other scores and give a brief uh, yeah, comment to them. Oh, that's, it's so difficult, uh, but I tried to think about it because there's so many and I don't have a top three list. You know, I mean, if I go here, oh, I list this and I go there, oh, what the, this and, you know, I'm, I'm all over the place. But uh, I came up with uh, Ennio Morricone is The Untouchables. I just love that score because I think it encompasses everything that Enyo was so good at. Beautiful, heartfelt themes, but also a, a, a deep originality, you know, a, a mm -hmm. sense of, you know, that sequence in the in the uh, in in the the train station, the way he scored that, that it's just I, I think it's a little bijou, as we say in French. It's a it's a little jewel of a score, mm -hmm. and I really mm -hmm. enjoyed that. Uh, of course, you know my love for John Williams um, because I, you know, my kids were little when the Harry Potter films came out. So I love those th first three movies that that John <laughs> Williams scored. For me, I don't know, they're close to my heart because of my kids, you know. And so that, that's wonderful. And I guess I, I could mention uh, Ayao Miyazaki's movies, uh, Joey Zaishi mm -hmm. um, score for Princess Mononoke. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. Just Perfect, absolutely perfect and very moving. Anyway, that, yeah. those are some of the scores that I love, but there's so many. <laughs> of course, but also my favorite of John Williams, uh, when I would name is Artificial Intelligence. This I really love a lot. True. Uh, <laughs> True. Wonderful, also very complex and uh, different a little to his other uh, music. And from uh, Ennio Morricone, as I love also the Untouchables, this Al Capone scene with the trumpets. This is really outstanding. Oh, yeah. yes. oh my God, sexy oh. also, as a very super music. Mm. And yeah, but my favorite one, Ennio, I, I told him also, and he was very um, touched and, and talked one hour about uh, uh, the score with me, the, the clan of the Sicilians, the Sicilian clan. Um, yeah, from 1968 with Alain Delon, Lino Ventura, Jean Gabin, this uh, caper movie, and then this, this soundtrack. Also when I marry, this will be my uh, wedding music, of oh, course, yeah. This, oh. There's the whole life in it. It's uh, elegic, but also you are as a proud music and wonderful uh, melodies fighting against each other, a, a Bach motif against the Sicilian motif. The rhythm is super, the instruments are, also, this is for me the best and I can listen nonstop. I could listen my whole life, the whole soundtrack, the so oh, 13 right. tracks and this is also for me the, the best even everything from him is uh, amazing yeah that's, really. well that yeah i mean that's the that's the essence of Ennio right there but he, he is he's so brilliant and and, and original he, he's daring he's a, just a daring composer or he was a daring composer certainly an inspiration absolutely it influenced many other composers and uh, very unique also yeah it's also this pop oh. element he brought to, to the uh, film scores because before was often used this Tchaikovsky touch. I love Tchaikovsky a lot. Yeah, I don't want nothing to say any bad word uh, as a hero for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it was really a break in this uh, kind of film music. Yeah, and influence. Absolutely. Uh, and you were right when you mentioned John Williams. Uh, the, the more parallel scores, if we, uh, like um, what he did for Tin Tin in the beginning, was really the opening sequence of Tin Tin. When he when he inserts mm -hmm. that jazz influence. Super. Uh, is that's I think that's his particular little niche there. Of course, you know the the whole classical stuff is fantastic. It's all you know uh, early twentieth century inspired and everything is just gorgeous. But that particular or uh, catch me if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, I know some really interesting things in there as well as far as the yeah. jazz touch, and I really appreciate that. But we could probably talk about this forever. <laughs> oh, so ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fascinating. And yesterday I entered your website and then I could see 
you, you did also for another animation film the score or yeah i did i did many i did, I did a few animated films um i did a lot of animated television uh yeah. here in montreal I mean, you know as a that you know you have to earn a living so that's 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 that was my bread and butter for a very long time but yeah i did a few other animated films some live action films as well and so in documentaries and you know right. so yeah. how, how about uh, hollywood scores did you have contact with, with hollywood and uh, want to do to be honest i'm i'm just starting out really as far as hollywood and i think troll um is kind of could be the uh the launch of that particular oh, no. side of my career i mean i don't know we'll see i mean uh, you know that the other director uh kevin monroe yeah. is uh from los angeles and, oh, and okay and is, he remained a good friend so we're very much oh, in touch so but you know yes of course who wouldn't want to do hollywood movies um but it's it's circumstance you know i mean well, you, it's luck you can't plan it i, I understand exactly it's not something you plan yeah but because also uh, canadian artists are uh, very talented also actors yeah like uh, also he died this year christopher plama was also from canada yeah yes uh, yes loved, loved him a lot a wonderful actor and so on yeah or, or bill shatner or the william shatner uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> interview with him yeah he's really cool he's now 90 years old and He looks much younger, and when you talk to him, listen to his voice, you think he's 48 or something. He's really super. It's, it's, and he it's, also doing music, yeah, singing and so. As it's really so, like, it's, it's a listening style. Well, it's super. He's uh, yeah, he's supernatural. This this guy. <laughs> 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 he's he's the real Captain Kirk. There's no doubt about it. <laughs> Did you also score for a science fiction film until now or not? I don't know. No, I haven't had the chance, unfortunately, yet. But hopefully, you know, it's it's strange when you when you start on a road, and I've done a lot of animation. Mm -hmm. You kind of get uh, identified with with a certain, you know, a certain style or a certain. Uh, okay, well, this guy does animation, so you know, you kind of go down that road, and you just follow the road as it goes. Oh, I'd love to do. I'd love to do science fiction for sure. There's so many wonderful composers out there today now. It's uh, it's not like it used to be 20 years or 30 years ago where you had a handful of composers. Today, there's the, everyone's a composer almost. <laughs> Everyone. Not necess necessarily good composers, but there are some extraordinary <laughs> composers uh, in the younger generation too. And, and is it a lonely business? Because uh, you sit in your studio, you do on the computer. Okay, later, of course, I know contact with the musicians and so yeah this is true and there are many uh, people around you but you're also still in contact with other composers or everybody is doing and living in his own composing world or you well, share when you compose it's a very lonely business in a way i mean it's a hermit's um, job but because of the way the world is connected today i think we're it's a lot less like that because we're all You know, once you're connected to a production, and of course with the internet and everything, it's it's all, it's it's so much more. Um, you're so much more in a relationship with other people, but uh, no, it's I think pretty much you know people are more isolated, but there's a lot more connection probably today than there was before uh, between composers and with the productions. But it is it is a lonely job. It, I mean, you have to enjoy yeah. your time with yourself. And with your inner world, uh, because that's that's where everything comes from. Um, and how can we say it? You you think in music, because when you see the, the film, then the, the the theme comes automatically to you, or you have to think about it first and watch again. Uh, can you describe a little your composing style, please? Um, I guess it, it starts with a. Um, a large view of the film right? you kind of have to you have to look at, I, I look at the film and I kind of just appreciate what it is as an ensemble and then I then I dive into specifics uh, for creating themes I'm a I'm a very um, I really believe in thematic scoring um, I, I think it gives strength to a movie and it gives strength to it's what lingers on after the film is done When, once the, the audience comes out of the theater or stops screening, you know, streaming their film, the music is what stays with you. So I'm a real believer in creating powerful themes 
Um, so that's where I start. That's my starting point. Um, mm -hmm. Creating, creating, because themes for me are like characters. Mm -hmm. um, and a film without characters, it's not as interesting, obviously. <laughs> it's not a film if they don't have characters. So it, it, it's kind of an, it's, you know, it's a silly analogy, but it's, it's actually quite true. Um, the music is a parallel track to the story. So I try to install myself in this, in this path with the film, create themes, and then I dive in specifically to certain scenes. And strangely enough, I don't necessarily compose from beginning to end. Sometimes I will backtrack, I will start at the end, or I will start at a high point in the film. Um, it, where let, let's say I know that the theme will soar and this, this is where, this is the high point in the film. I will go there and create that. And that way, everything that comes before leads to that moment. So um, it's one of the aspects, but of course, there, then there's the, the specifics within each cue, you know, within each scene, you kind of focus, you kind of become micro in the microcosm of, of, of that particular scene. And it's like a little film, each scene being a little film, and then it's all connected together. So I don't know if I'm making any sense. I'm throwing all stuff yeah, in there, but... but when, when uh, to, to compose a melody, for example, yeah? Uh, you hear the melody inside and then you, you write it or how does it come to you? Uh, it depends. Um, I'm not necessarily sitting at the piano when I'm composing the melody. Oh, okay. Sometimes I'll be in my car yeah, or in yeah. my shower <laughs> and I'll think of something and something will come to mind or a fragment of melody. Yeah. Then I go to the piano and I develop it. Um, I think I work with impressions first. It's very impressionistic. It's, okay. um, mm -hmm. I, I just kind of go with the inspiration. Then I get an idea. Then I go back. It, it's it kind of, kind of a back and forth between mind and heart, you know, um, uh, using my mind to weave, but using my heart as a source of of inspiration connected with the film. It's like, what do I feel here? What's what's the feeling? What's what do I want to convey um, emotionally? And that's what drives the musical idea. Mm -hmm. is, uh, is this uh, troll score also out on CD now or not? No, because unfortunately the, the, the film hasn't been released in North America yet. Ah. Um, so uh, I don't know what's going to happen with that. Uh, you would have to ask Christian <laughs> what's going to happen with that. It's been released in many different places. Um, and because I'm, I'm um, legally binded with the company, I have to wait um, for, for Christian and for Sagatoon to, you know, tell me what's going to happen. So hopefully, maybe later this year, it will come out and the soundtrack will be available. I hope so. Yeah, I write also for a soundtrack magazine. And this would be interesting to write a review, because really, in my opinion, the soundtrack uh, makes the film better, you know, mm. uh, it, it supports a lot. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank yes. you. I guess it's, uh, it's, it's true. It, It, it would be fun for me, of course, to be able to release the soundtrack. I, I, I would love that. And I'm ready. I'm just waiting for the, <laughs> I'm waiting for them to say, okay, let's do it. Let's, let's go for it. <laughs> And um, can you talk about new projects? Is there any new film you are working now or, or television well, stuff or what? I don't know. Because of the pandemic, of course, things have slowed oh. down a little bit, unfortunately. Um, last year was good, but this year is slower. Last year was good, yeah. Well, because it was the it was the remains of the year before, because music comes at the end of projects usually. Wow. So I was finishing up on things that had already been yeah, created. I understand. And now it's uh, it's it's slower. It's been slower this year. But yeah, I have a I have a series project for for the U.S. coming up in November. I can't really talk about it, but uh, it's that's coming up. It's an animated series, and there's a, a feature film uh, coming next year. But that's going to be later in the year probably more around for it's a christmas release for 2022 mm -hmm. another animated uh film which should be really really fun i again i can't talk about it unfortunately at this point but uh hopefully there'll be other things you know the pandemic has has been 
uh, difficult in some ways, but it's allowed to, it's forced a, a lot of people, me included, to, okay, let's develop something with other people, with new, trying to branch out to new people. And uh, I have a good feeling that things are going to be uh, developing positively in the next oh, months. Yeah. How's the situation now in Canada? Was the cinemas uh, open or not? I don't know. I, yes, I think they just started opening, but it's very recent. And of course, the industry is having a hard time, you know, it's it's starting to pick up, but it's going to take some time for it, like any under, other industry, it's going to take time for it to, uh, to well, get since, that. Since six weeks we have in Germany the good life back. Uh, also, we had this Berlinale summer special, uh, I was part of it, and I came from, as a, I stay now here in Hanover with my uh, uh, mom and my mm -hmm. Siberian wolf dog Husky, but my first living place uh, is, uh, is uh, Berlin where I go with my dog always, yeah, but sometimes I visit mom. But then I come from Hanover to Berlin and beginning of June and it was like before, I did everyday interviews, film screenings, we celebrating together, carefully of course, but uh, it was really like before. Yesterday I was invited to a fashion show here in Hanover and really we did a wonderful party and so it was, it was great. But I fear maybe in autumn uh, government, uh, maybe cancel again a lot oh, now man. these cases they are really down yeah but they grow a little yeah but then they create a lot of fear again and so we will see i have now my second vaccination from monday i'm uh, have more freedom because then it's two weeks after the second vaccination and then i can don't need this test anymore because of this film festival every right. day i have to do this test every day okay I did it and it was okay, always negative, but you need also time to go there and make this test, show them and so, yeah. Yes, well, you're you're a little bit unlucky in a way. I mean, you're, the nature of your work is to be with people. For me, yeah. I'm, I'm completely isolated all the time. Essentially, <laughs> it, it hasn't affected me in that way. But uh, yeah, it's opening up in Canada. I think now vaccination is, is really up. I'm having my second dose uh, next week, I think. And so that'll be done. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I hope I won't get too many side effects. But yeah. that being said, I'm, I'm glad. I, I haven't seen my mom in two years. She really? Lives in, she lives in the United States, so oh. and the border is closed. So I haven't seen my brother who lives in New York State. I haven't seen my mom. I mean, we talk on like this. No, but, but not our, uh, yeah. The so border is closed. USA border, the border between Canada and the United States uh, the the um, the Earth um, border. You can you can fly in um, with certain with a lot of restrictions, not just to go and see your family, but if you have work, you can fly in back and forth, but you can't drive through the border. So it's been closed since uh, March of last year. So that's a lot. That's that's a long long time. It's been a year and a half now since it's been closed, and uh, to hear. yeah, it's heartbreaking. So hopefully they'll open soon and we can get back together again. Maybe it's a revenge of nature. To raise yeah. nature or it was an accident in Wuhan or it was the CIA or we don't know exactly, but uh, then when it was starting to see, because before when we had also epidemic, it was just uh, growing um, or, or, as a, yeah, like this spread, but just in one part. And it, when it was in Germany, then just Germany. But now right. we, call, we travel a lot, fly there, fly there, and then boom, boom, boom. Yeah, so it's Absolutely. Going, this is so terrible. But um, unfortunately, I think we're going to be living with these, um, these issues for, for a long time, for the rest of our lives, probably, uh, whether it's pandemics or, you know, of course, climate change and all that. It's... Uh, I, I don't know how the you know how how everything is in your part of the world. Well, actually, where are you calling from? Where are you now? Hanover, Hanover, and Germany. Hanover. Ah, okay. In uh, Germany. I live in Berlin, but uh, second living place is Hanover, where my mom stay. So okay. now here is very low with this uh, Corona, but of course it was also uh, higher in the uh, until uh, April. It was te terrible, yeah, terrible. So uh, twenty thousand every day. Uh, of, as a cases yeah now it's uh, in whole germany 1400 but last week it was just 800 and the, before it was just 200 yeah that was, was so down okay and also they told when this incident is under 50 then everything is open again but then it's incident just 10 yeah or eight and uh, not not everything is open so it's also 
Sometimes the government, I write every uh, month in a um, famous newspaper, Frankfurter Rundschau, also a critical report about this uh, Corona rules and this um, politics also uh, compared with the talk shows and so. Also some is, of course, must fight against the virus. Yeah, don't ignore it. Absolutely, yeah. But um, yeah, the, sometimes uh, politics is too strict uh, in some way. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the same thing here in Canada. I mean, there's a lot of people complaining along the borders um, about, uh, but uh, our prime minister is extremely conservative and he's like, okay, hold on here. It's, I mean, it's the longest border in the world. It's probably pretty complicated to close and open. Uh, so they don't want to open if they're not sure. <laughs> so I can understand their position, but at the same time, economically, there's a, a lot of people are suffering. And, and so you anyway, the young guy is this Trudeau. This young, uh, is, is, is yeah, young. Trudeau is a younger. Yeah, he's he's pretty young. I mean, he's our youngest ever uh, prime young minister, guy. and and he's quite loved and and appreciated. Um, so you know, we'll see what happens after this pandemic. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> His career. Awesome. Uh, he looks a little like the uh, prime minister of Austria. He's also very young, this Kurz. They look really like they could be brothers. But Interesting. this Kurz uh, is also very conservative, you know. And they was, uh, first they were super strict in Austria, but then they were open-minded with his Corona rules, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they are, little, they are different to Germany. And in Germany, sometimes they were confused to politics and they just listened to some scientists from this Robert Koch Institute, yeah. But when the Robert Koch Institute is also sometimes telling the truth, they don't know really exactly uh, about all cases, yeah. And so, and, mm, as a, I did also many interviews with uh, scientists about the situation, as a, a famous scientist, and the, most of them also told me we have to live with this um, virus. Yeah, it will not going completely away. Yeah, so mm -hmm. you know, if we would talk now two years before, yeah, then we would say about the situation. It is a dystopian science fiction film. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Totally, yes, and I think there'll probably be movies about this eventually. <laughs> yeah, I wait for this big movie uh, about this uh, situation, yeah. Uh, there are some smaller films also at this uh, International Film Festival. It was a winner, a film from Romania. Uh, he was also dealing with this corona situation with the mask. It is a, also an um, ironical statement of the porn industry. So it was an interesting film, yeah. And this was the Golden Bear winner, yeah. Lonely... Yeah tunes of porn or uh, has a long and funny name um, but I think also Hollywood one day they must do this uh, big corona film uh, so, yeah, yeah probably <laughs> if they can open again and, and do some films and you do the score <laughs> and I'll do the score yes <laughs> how, how do you illustrate the, 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 uh, the, the virus in music you know uh, i'm gonna have to think about that one <laughs> this is a good question for you as <laughs> it's a very good question yeah. i don't know i don't have the answer yet but i'll think about it <laughs> okay uh, Daniel, so I, I thank you a lot uh, for for the interview oh thank you so much for your interest in my work and i'm, I'm really flattered and it was really wonderful to to meet you and talk with you and uh well, I hope we can we can talk again sometime. Yeah, if you have really, uh, you can have my contact via William or uh, I say yeah, we have to have my contact. We have I already do. Yeah, wrote, yes. wrote emails. Uh, yeah, and you can answer also my my magazine. And if you have uh, maybe some new uh, score, or so please uh, keep me informed, and we can do again a conversation, or can write if it's out on a C a CD. Yeah, for example, um, I can write a review. So. Like. Absolutely. I, I will definitely keep in touch if something develops, especially with Troll, but if uh, other things and oh. other things will happen eventually. It's, it's going to take a little time, but, uh, you know, once we get out of this silliness that we're in, uh, oh. I'm sure things will start to go again. Okay. So um, thank you so much, Mark. That was yeah. uh, really, really fun to talk with you and take the time to, to get to know you a little bit. So no, you're welcome. You. It was also my pleasure to talk to you. And thanks thank for you. this wonderful uh, music uh, really yesterday and today you made my day with, with your scores it was really fantastic oh thank you i'm really really flattered it, it's wonderful after you know i mean it's been three years now since i created the score and to have 
such a, a wonderful feedback is is really heartwarming. So thank you. And I think also I really I collect uh, film scores. I have over 800 uh, CDs and uh, records also. Yeah, I collected also on record but when I started. I have 3,000 records, but maybe soundtrack is um, also 500. Yeah, so. And uh, my fa favorite period is the 60s and 70s. Yeah, also a lot of 50s uh, scores. Yeah, of course. so um, yeah, and growing up with, with film music is always. Uh, I, I have a lot of fields in music, also pop and classic, of course. Yeah, but uh, soundtrack is uh, the most important for me. <laughs> well, your knowledge of film music is much, much greater than mine. That's for sure. But that's your field of work, right? That's yeah. your. Yeah, yeah your passion and your interest. So I'm flattered that you would be interested in mine. Yes, thank you. Well, thank keep you me informed if you like, I would be really happy. Keep thank you. Happy. Good. So have a wonderful day. Greetings to your family. Yeah. Thank and, you, same uh, to you and have a, a wonderful rest of summer and uh, be well and let's keep in touch. Yeah, and uh, good luck for the second vaccination, of course. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Bye then. Bye-bye, yeah. Mark. Thank you. Bye.